Queensland Rail failed to reach its own target of 93% of trains arriving within three minutes of schedule. But its employee bonuses have kept arriving right on time, leaping from $5 to $18 million in one year. QR is defending the payments, saying they were based on the company's improved financial performance, which saw an increased profit of 6%. If people are performing well, then they do deserve bonuses. But I think the indication here is that Queensland Rail has a lot of work to do. If it does some more work, then maybe you could justify the bonuses. These performance bonuses are part of the normal commercial framework and in order to be able to recruit and retain the best people to be able to manage QR, then this is a part of the commercial environment. As pensioners struggle and the housing crisis deepens, Brisbane's commuters are wondering why their tax money is rewarding employees of a service they deride. More trains and more carriages so people get a seat. You know, you're paying top dollar and you've got to stand. These managers and um, how would you, uh, what do you call them, staff, that um, look for a bonus at the end of the financial year or whenever it is, no, that's wrong. You're there to do a job, do it. This latest cash controversy comes on the back of the embarrassing river fire scandal. QR was forced to cancel a lavish $30,000 river fire dinner for freight executives at ritzy Brisbane restaurant Sienna, which they were eventually forced to pay for anyway. Well, I'm not sure they have really learnt their lesson, but I, I, we'd also have to ask what sort of government interference has been involved in Queensland Rail and whether they've learnt anything from Sienna. QR has received a series of damaging safety reports, with its drivers found to run red lights at a rate of more than 9% above the national average. Chris Gary, QUT News.